Hi folks, uh, right it's the 11th day, the 11th hour, of the 11th month, or 10 minutes away, 8 minutes away, no 12 minutes away. <coughs> uh, normally I would uh, join everybody else or most people in the two minute silence in remembrance to the fallen soldiers and forces. Uh, but uh, I stood with uh, millions of others yesterday in our churches and memorial services around the country and had our two minutes silence yesterday. So in case somebody makes a point of it, we did. Warm me poppy proudly. I used to be in the military many, many years ago, in my bit. Right, okay, um, I'm going to use, well I've got some ultramarine, uh, light red, sap green, Payne's grey and a yellow ochre. I've just used you might use a bit of yellow ochre in the sky. But I've been sort of like all of us, we, we look at landscapes on uh, on television and in films, and you see let's just get that bit straight. You see scenes that you'd like to paint. But if you're really observant, as I'm sure you all are, you will note that most landscapes, uh, I'm talking about English, uh, British, UK landscapes, Northern European landscapes, <clears throat> are predominant, predominantly red and green. You, so you've got, uh, not, not red, uh, blatant red or blatant green, but um, a mixture going from a very light pale green, uh, red, which stands for dead grass, wheat stubble and all that sort of stuff, um, but throughout the, throughout this scene, you'll see, if you look, you'll see variations of those two colours. Well, obviously green because it's uh, it's more chlorophyll in the uh, the, the pigment. But um, other colours, so blue in the sky. If you want to do a blue sky, and I, I do like to do a blue sky, well, a blue background with clouds and stuff. And, and I use perhaps some of the yellow ochre with the light red for my skies, mixed with a lot of white. So um, I, I'm really enjoying this way of painting. And I can't find my new brush now. Well, there it is. My new, my new brush is China. Geran Ger series from China. Well, plenty of oil. So I'll, I'll put in, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go for a bit of red to start with. And just go, bit of a path, well, bit of a path coming down. That just remind me, now we're going with some landscape, kind of green and red, plenty of oil. Uh, what, what I was thinking of was a, a winter trees. I've not done winter trees with this this method before, so so we'll have a bit of a hill hill. And in the in the foreground, we have more dark red. Dark red is the red red and the green. And if I want any really dark dark stuff, I can. I can uh, add some paints grey. Oh, I've got some. That might be a bit too high, so I'll take a little bit of that out with a bit of tissue. You can uh, change this very quickly, as you know. I'm just gonna get that down to that path. Okay, uh, I'm going to use a sort of a rough, rough brush. This is quite a reasonable quality brush, so I'll use a cheapo, one of these. I've been to the range this morning, 
water a 500ml or half a litre pot of gesso and I went to trees now and add a tube of uh, sap green because I use a lot of that obviously Now I'm going to bring that into the sky when I do it. Get a nice shape. So I want air in this. I don't want it to be uh, um, green. I want it to be sort of dark grey. So I suppose I could have used some paints grey in there, shouldn't I? So let's try a bit of paint. Just wipe the brush. I don't have a bit of red in that. So we'll have that path coming around here, I think. And a larger one here. Bit of red in it, red and blue, uh, red and green. Let's get this one on that level. So I will try and get an impression of winter trees. Can put some green somewhere on it, man. Okay, so let's get that red. I don't want the, the horizon there, I want it more or less here. So let's see where we go. Uh, got some tissue. I'll put a, sky, a bit of sky in a minute. But at this stage of the painting, it just looks a load of rubbish. He looks, what's he doing now? Where's he going with this? It won't work. But usually we manage to get. So if you haven't had anything I've actually thrown away yet. Oh, there's our path. Oh, a bit of detail now. Uh, I've gessoed this board with, well, expensively with a with a lump of uh, my Galleria Titanium White and but I didn't want to use more of it so that's why I've got the gesso right okay let's, let's just get some it's a bit oily this, this bit here so let's uh, it makes a very good uh, brush of tissue. Now that's a better colour. So we uh, should have done that at the beginning, I forgot. So a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of red. Give this one a little bit bigger before we think about the sky.
like I have said. <coughs> I'll uh, put in some uh, some blue. I mean, just blue and white, a load of ultramarine. We'll put lights over this. I, I, if you haven't seen some of this before, or me do this before, I did a demonstration the week before last for a ladies group, and I did a, oh, it turned out very well actually. And they were, it's all open mouth as I did it because of the wussy doing, as he could turn that into a painting. But bit by bit, it uh, did turn into a painting. And somebody came up at the end of the evening and said, Oh, I want to buy that. So that was nice. <laughs> now, it doesn't matter that the green goes into the sky because this is, we're only early days yet, but I want plenty of light in there. But I'll let that dry up a bit. I'll do a bit of, bit of texture now. So it's all about texture. Texture and contrast, tone, basics. Basics of painting. Light against dark. Could put some nice cloud, nice light cloud in here. But you can, you can, you just, I'm going to, I'm thinking of, um, now I, I know, a lot of this is, is front lit painting into the light so these would be in silhouette so I'm going to put some of these in dark if I can because they, they wouldn't be white they would have some light on them but it's a bit of a variety that's why I don't like I'm so far away from this bit that I also get a bit bit clumsy but something like that all right now some nice uh, texture in here get some, get some dark foreground the idea of, of, of dark in the foreground it, it keeps your Eye into the in the picture. Do some of that. A bit of a bit of light there. A bit of paint spray and a bit of bit of green. That might have been overdone, but do we care? Because we can take that out. and darks and going in here.
good bit of shadow in there. It's a bit, bit wet. Right, get, a, get another brush and sort of put in a bit of bit of light. Touch of ochre and touch of red. Just a light touch of red. Put a bit of dark on there, I think light red and ultramarine. Don't panic. This is all going to get blended. If you, <coughs> if you want light, Paint up. <coughs> light, back to light. Right, because it's sort of coming slowly but surely. If you're new to all this and you're still sort of making progress with your watercolours and you feel a bit jaded, as I do, try something different like this. It's, it's not expensive really. You, by the time you've got half a dozen tubes of student quality paint, look, Winson, Winson and Newson, or Dale around, it doesn't matter. It's a half a dozen of those, probably 20, 22 pounds. They'll last as long as you don't use them. Um, and the boards, well, I'm painting on the MDF. It's just, oops, oh, sorry about that. Ah. Right, okay, well, we've got some texture now. It's very slippery on the back, this MDF. It's, it's wonderful stuff. Let's put that there. The, the, uh, that's not tight enough. Right, we'll soon sort that out. Right, let's just... Uh, Oh, there we are. Uh, right, let's carry on. Uh, where was I? Uh. 
Right, well, where were we? Uh, bit of blending. But we want to get some. I have got lemon, oh, there's cabin yellow on here, but I'm not going to use it. Right, I'm just going to put some darks in there now. Then I'll, I'll, I'll start me blending. Paints grey, not paints grey, you know, ultramarine light red. Give it a nice rich dark. Right, okay, let's get a blendy brush, which will be this large uh, three inch hake. I've never used it for painting. So. Just gently just waft around it. Stand up first. So I can't see the light shining on the on this bit from the window on my right. Just do a bit of this to start with, then it'll go just a little bit dry, and we can carry on with the blending and add more lights and darks if we need to. Take it behind the tree. Dry, dry the brush, clean the brush. I have to finish my tea off, I think. See, as it, as it sort of goes a bit tacky, it won't dry. That will take a couple of days, but it will go a little bit uh, nicely. Tacky. So that's why we work over all the picture. So we've got quite an interesting sky there. Uh, right, let's go back to these trees now and start a bit of blending. Sorry about my head. Now, I have to admit that when you get used to this, it is easy. So that, so that is generally mixing with the, the blue in the sky. And we can put some more texture in there. I'll just, really, just do a bit more on the other side. and.
Oh, I just take a little bit of that to, out there. I might fill that in a bit, but uh, we'll take this tree up a little bit higher. These are twigs at the end of the uh, branches. Yeah. Well, that's looking alright. Let's take a little bit of uh, texture out of that. <clears throat> right, that goes back to the other one because it's got a bit more red and the paint's grey. See, the paint's grey is a really good shortcut to a dark, a good dark. It's all like a valley, so it's more a red and paints grey painting and blue. I like the red. Okay, well there's something's happening there. Let's get that to in here as well. So we can add some uh, trees. But if I go too dark, I've, uh, I, the dark trunk won't show, will it? Because it will just clash. Now we've we'll just put a bit, bit of dark, let's have some dark green now. Paints grey and green. Let's have a cup of tea. Now we've got to sort out all this. We've got to put some more texture in the trees. Uh, let's uh, take a bit out of here. Alright, it's got a bit of, bit of dark shape around here. We can just feather that a little bit more. I quite like my sky. I might put it a bit darker over in that corner. But I just want to hit some air in there. Right. 
They've got to do something there now. Let's just uh, tamp it out. I think I'm just a bit enthusiastic for that. It's making it look fairly realistic. We want some of that out there. I know we we'll, we'll put some of this. We're only creating an illusion of uh, of detail. You're, I know that's been said before by another lovely artist. Well, I'm not saying I'm a lovely artist. But it's true, you, it, it's like putting in a fence. If you put all the fence in, it looks a bit stilted. But if you leave, leave some of the fence out, your brain it, uh, connects the dots and it, you get a sort of an emotional attachment to, to what you've just done without realising it. That just puts a bit of air back in. In this lesson. Okay. Coming on. This is the bit that takes takes the time. It's just the texturing, just lifting out. Right, I'll. Uh, Go back to my uh, It's very attractive, but it's not quite right. It's because of this uh, dark against light. This shows up, light against the dark shows up better, but it's not technically uh, right. So too much heavy detail here. Oh, just putting these little branches in, but they've got to be attached to something.
I tend to neglect that side because the light's shining on it. Not much I can do about it really. Other than move, well, no, draw the blind, but then I lose all my light. Uh, right, I've taken too much out of that, so I'm just going to put in, put some back. Very easy to overdo this. Uh, put a bit of that, a bit of red. Right, let's just take out some more light in here. This is just a cheap old brush. I bought a pack of um, about 16 various sizes for about eight pounds in, in uh, Hobbycraft. Well, I'm beginning to quite like this now. Right, let's uh, lift out some uh, other stuff here. I'm not quite finished with the sky. Oh, 
Right, let's get another bit of tissue. Let's get a clean tissue, a bit of a messy job. I just. Oh, I don't drink my tea. I'm taking, really just trying to get all this, this off here. So I've just now counter changed something against that light. The shadow in there. Okay, now um, bit on that path down. Let's uh, the paint's growing a bit of red. Right, back in that sky now. I have three brushes, quite a few brushes to clean up here. I'm still looking for, for one. I, most of the bristle brushes in the DIY or hardware bits of supermarkets are, are nylon. They're not bristle, they're not hogs bristle. Right, I'm going to uh, put in some light, more light now. 
So I'll get a brush for it so I can... Uh, I didn't mean that much light, I could, could probably brush in the uh, titanium white. I think it's, uh, I've had you know, trouble with my hands these days, years and years, 40 years of sewing carpet and fitting the stuff is sort of done for my hands really. Uh, oh that's a bit... Uh, Soften all this. Okay, I'm go I'm going to. Can't think of much more to do with that. I'm going to put it in a frame. So uh, just uh, be patient. If you want to support my support my work on YouTube, uh, you can subscribe to my Patreon channel, which is very inexpensive. It helps to pay for the materials. Right. Um, tax on interest. Hold on. I did check this board in the frame before I uh, worked on it. So I have to give these frames another coat of white because they're going to be a bit mucky. Now. One in the middle. And because this is two millimeter MDF, it's um, it's quite it's very very tough, and quite bendy, very hard, but much bigger than this. I have gone much bigger than the two demos, but uh, it's uh, a bit risky for larger frames in case it warps. But um, I'm going to get some. Well, next lot they're going to be, I think, three millimeter MDF, which is a bit more rigid. Right there we are. Oh, I think that looks alright. <coughs> I think we've created quite a bit of a, an illusion of. Detail. Uh, I, I think I, that's glaring there. I need to put a bit of dark, shadowy stuff back there. And take a bit, bit out. a little bit more there. Eh? I think that's a little bit better. And then we can put a little bit back in there. Not quite. 
soften it a bit. It's all about, about this contrast. I was going to think about putting some dark in, but you can't put dark against dark. Just make sure. Uh, you can drag, drag little bits out, like that. I uh, don't want to do too much of that. See, they really would be uh, dark, but I suppose I could risk ruin my nice uh, rigger for you. Oh well, uh, yeah, where can I find it? Hold on. It's hard to register because the pay, 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 uh, the uh, board's got so much oil on it. No, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to let that go. I don't think I'm going to improve that. Let's just put that back there a little bit. I can always work on these uh, sort of a later date. Uh, so if the light is there, there will be shadow here, but um, it, it's, uh, it's all very tricky to imagine that, that bit. Uh, well, maybe we can put a bit of, bit of shadow in here. the light. No, not happy with that. See, the, this is the fiddling stage now. Okay, well, I don't think I'm going to improve it. I, I quite like it. Um, let's just... Uh, Pull you back a bit and change that angle. I'm looking at the cam. The well, that will have to do, my friend. Uh, well, there we are. So, winter trees, autumn tree, no, winter trees, winter trees. But bear in mind, I can, I can do more to it, but it needs to, to dry. And I, then, then once they're dry, I'm, I'm a bit loath to, to change them. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.